Daily Dose here. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the difference between using meth and craving meth and how that is a huge indicator in regards to sometimes their success in being clean and also discussing how in the United States there is a lack of resources for people detoxing for meth because there are no FDA approved medications. Let's jump right on into the video. Hey, holla, please like and subscribe, leave a comment. Love you all, let's get into it right now. So first, let's discuss again two groups with meth, with meth recovery. A lot of times, a person suffering from meth withdrawal or stimulant use disorder, they report either really wanting to use it or they crave it. Now, keep in mind, this is after going through the initial detox, the physical detox, which can be horrible, but I can honestly say for seeing patients in the psych setting that somebody, if they just had to go through really bad physical withdrawals like the flu and just like, you know, having a bug for a week and then it'd be over completely, they would take it. But the problem is, is that the physical, there's a physical withdrawal depending on what you're using and if it's meth, how are you using it? And then once, if you can beat the physical withdrawals, in my opinion, this is where the harder part comes in. And this is why they need to have a lot more resources for people who are using meth. The mental, the mental side of it. The mental side effects of anxiety, depression, suicidal tendencies, suicidal thoughts, passive S SI, active SI, is very real and since the FDA has not approved any medications for treating stimulant use disorder or really what I'm targeting right now is meth, meth uh, use disorder, um, somebody really affected by that. The problem is, is they come in, they go through the physical detox a lot of times in, detox, in, in facilities and then they're on their way. And it's like, okay, they got through the physical, but the mental cravings, how are they gonna cope with it? And don't get me wrong, we do a great job in the psych facilities at, and I, I thank the therapist for this too, providing resources so, when, resources so when they leave, they have an outpatient program to go to, they have resources to make sure they're getting the medications filled and whatnot, that, that is one great thing. But I, But what I have found when it comes to in the inpatient setting, it's really hard you know, when they're going through detox, it's typically not just a meth, people just using meth. It's people using meth, alcohol, you name it. And what, I, what I'm aiming at is there needs to be more specific targets and a lot more FDA approved medications for stimulant use disorder specifically, and in particular with meth. Because it kind of get it kind of gets clumped in there a lot with just you know alcohol and opiates and opioids. When I believe they need a they need to make they need to really be focusing on new treatments and therapy is great. But I'm talking from a medication standpoint. So sorry about that rant. So my my whole point is when it comes once again to people detoxing or long term. Um, if they've used a meth long term, there's two, and, and they're and they're actively detoxing and have been off of it. What they're reporting long term is wanting to use and wanting to crave, which are completely different. Use and crave with meth is has one has different implications 100%. For use, there have been some studies that have shown that things like Wellbutrin, which is an antidepressant and works and it helps with anxiety which would be a medication that could help long term so once you went through the physical withdrawal you're entering now that stage of mental and just because your your dopamine's been depleted but also you know to an extent your serotonin your norepinephrine those are going to be down as well as a result and having a little boost in that can really help and it also can help you you know move around try to stay physically active because if you because the more i will say if you if you do exercise while going through detox and long term that's a natural way to get your dopamine pumping again 
but I, but I am off track. I am off track. So back to it. So use Welbutrin. It's an antidepressant. Modafinil. It's a non-amphetamine stimulant that has uh, dopamine effects. Not the same though. The stimulant-like activity of this drug might be a good treatment for symptoms of withdrawal. It can also help with attention, memory, motor functions uh, for people who have used long term. So once again, it's not a psychotropic, but that's kind of what psych psych psychotropics do as well is they, they know it works on your frontal, your prefrontal cortex to really kind of help relax you, but at the same time, you're wanting to get stuff done. Um, and lastly, naltrexone and opiate. Now this, once again, this is why I'm saying meth gets clumped in a lot of times with opiates and opioid and alcohol. Naltrexone is an opioid antagonist, which might help reinforce the role of behavior sensitization as well as blocking cravings. See, and here's my problem with this. Naltrexone with, with blocking cravings, it has been shown to help with alcohol. And I know, yes, alcohol affects your dopamine, but when somebody's been using meth in particular, their dopamine has been depleted to a whole different level. And naltrexone, I have seen used and, you know, hey, I haven't, I am not gonna lie, I haven't, I've found that it's great for alcohol, but I haven't really heard many patients who've said naltrexone has been great for methamphetamine use. Now the cravings. Cravings is a whole nother, whole nother um, side of this. So once again, long-term, if somebody's craving meth, that's a whole nother thing that there are right now, once again, no current medications approved by the FDA. But I will tell you, I was thinking about this earlier and I actually found this, that there was, I was even thinking about this because I was like, you know, if somebody's been using meth, if you think about it, and they've been craving it and their dopamine's been depleted for so long, why not, and once, you're, and once you've been clean for about a month, why not put them on a very low dose, very low dose, of a dextroamphetamine or even even something as easy as a light, you know, a very low dose of Adderall, say not even more than 10 milligrams once a day, no more than that. Or, you know, 10 of an extended release um, Adderall ER. They have, they have written here with cravings that that is the number one reason a lot of times people relapse. It's over 70% of people relapse not because they're wanting to use, though it does go with it, but it's the cravings that go with it, which your dopamine being depleted long term. Now, I'm not saying medications will always work, but it's an, it's one aspect of care that can help you. Exercise can, there's other outlets that can, but from this, I just find it not troubling, but just interesting and fascinated by the fact that they're just they're really medication wise is not anything that targets specifically methamphetamine use disorder but dextroamphetamine is released on is is on here which it's a stimulant that affects the central nervous system helps us to fo helps people to focus and releases dopamine yeah so like an a low dose adderall so my whole my whole thing is long i'm hoping soon because they ha they do have some studies that have shown that this can help but it just seems like even from a perspective of common sense that stuff like this could help, could really help, pe could help um, people who've tried medications, who've tried things, who've tried exercise, who've tried everything, and they're just not having success with it. Why not give them a low dose of like a, you know, of a dextroamphetamine or something? Um, but yeah, that was the whole point of this video. I wanted to make the, I wanted to just let everyone know when it comes to methamphetamine use disorder, from a medication perspective, the FDA has not so, um, approved any medications. So it kind of, methamphetamine use disorder kind of gets clumped with alcohol use disorder, opioid, opioid use disorder, and a lot of the same medications are used for this, which that's why we need, we need, we need more studies and we need, we need just, more research, which I think this could help. I'm actually a, think that giving a low dose of a dextroamphetamine could really help somebody once again, once they get past the physical withdrawal and they've been going through mental withdrawal and nothing else has helped, why would we not make that accessible to somebody who's trying to do better and getting off of meth? This is your daily dose of mental health with Adam. I love you all. Sorry for the rant, but I found this very interesting and I was thinking about this myself since I work in the psych field. What can I bring to you that I can relate to and apply in my daily life that might interest you with this? And this is why I love mental health. But 
Please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my booty juice video. Check out what about uh, methamphetamine and my PCP video. I'll have them all at the very end of the video, uh, which will come up in a couple seconds. Love you all. Stay cool. This is your daily dose of mental health with Adam. Love you all.